Hi, I'm David Stein of Money for the Rest of Us, and today I want to share with you how to transition into early retirement. The evening after I told my business partners I was quitting, I recall lying on my hotel bed with a smile on my face thinking, I can do anything with the rest of my life. It was a pleasant thought, despite not knowing what I wanted to do. For 16 years, I had worked at the same institutional investment advisory firm. I started out as an analyst and I rose to managing partner, chief investment strategist, and chief portfolio strategist. For 16 years, I'd used the pronoun we when expressing an investment opinion to clients and prospects, even though many of those opinions were my own. I longed to be able to say I, to see what it was like to be a soloist. So six months after telling my partners I was going to leave, I quit the firm. And the next day I launched an investment newsletter and website under my own name, complete with an audited performance track record. I can now say publicly, I think and I believe. The novelty of having my own little business lasted for about five weeks. I didn't regret quitting, but I was miserable. There I was with complete freedom to do anything I wanted, and yet I was doing the exact same thing I had done for the previous decade, writing about the economy and markets while managing money. Only this time, I wasn't getting paid, and very few people read my work. I called a friend in London who had left a major ad agency to go out on her own. She gave me this advice. Slow down. Quitting a job is like getting a divorce. You're just too emotionally raw to make major decisions right away. Give it time and your path will slowly reveal itself. So I took her advice and I shut down my newsletter. It's pretty straightforward because I didn't really have any subscribers. So instead I took up fly fishing and web programming. I continued to invest and found it refreshing to do so without having to explain to anyone why I made a given decision with my trades and not having to go to our compliance department. By late fall, seven months after quitting, I started plotting a relaunch on my site. This time it would be an automated investment advisory service. And I left with my family to travel through Asia and Europe. But when I got back early the next winter, I launched a new site one year after leaving my previous firm. I made it three months this time. Every day I woke up fearful somebody would hire me to provide investment advice. I loved designing the site and figuring out the technology, but I realized I just no longer wanted the responsibility or the pressure of advising people on what to do with their money. So I shut down the site for a second time and went fishing that summer. And I began to tell people I was retired. And just to see how it felt, I was only 48 and it felt really early, but that's what I was. I didn't have a job and I didn't really know what to do. I reflected on my London friend's advice to slow down and allow time for a new path to emerge. Up until that point, my path had consisted of launching projects and then shutting them down. I felt lost. But now it's been five years since quitting my job and becoming self-employed or early retired, depending on your definition. My friend was right. A new path finally emerged. And here is what I learned. Only the passage of time allows you to discover your true identity apart from your job. It is amazing how much of our self-perception, our sense of community, and our daily purpose comes from our employment. It's normal to feel a bit lost after quitting a job or career you have had for a decade or more. But over time, we discover which elements of our job we miss and which we are glad we no longer have to endure. In my case, I realized I missed writing and teaching about money, the economy, investing. So I launched Money for the Rest of Us podcast, and I've been doing that for three years. And now I have this YouTube channel, just another way to explore teaching. I don't miss the pressure of managing money for others, the constant travel, the conference calls or meetings. So I don't do that. You figure out which activities you like to do and which you don't. And you often discover new activities that you enjoy. In my case, fly fishing. The beauty of self-employment or early retirement is the ability to structure a life that includes the activities we enjoy the most. I've also learned the importance of balancing the planned and the unplanned. There's pleasure in being to wake up at the time you naturally awake without being jolted by an alarm clock. At the same time, real joy comes from having something to wake up for, a purpose, a project, a community to serve. Henry David Thoreau wrote in Walden, we must learn to reawaken and keep ourselves awake, not by mechanical age, but by an infinite expectation of the dawn, which does not forsake us in our soundest sleep. Yet we also have to slow down and let things flow. There's a temptation when pursuing activities we enjoy to overindulge. We need to make time for leisure. 
Joseph Piper wrote in Leisure, The Basis of Culture, that leisure is not the attitude of mind for those who are actively intervene, but of those who are open to everything. Not of those who grab and grab hold, but of those who leave the reins loose and who are free and easy themselves, almost like falling asleep, for one can fall asleep only by letting oneself go. Work in leisure, planned and unplanned, engaged but relaxed, awake but calm and peaceful enough to effortlessly fall asleep. That's the balance I think we should seek whether we are retired, early retired, or still working. Hey, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel just down below. And if you're retired, early retired, thinking about it, go ahead and share your experience in the comments below.